Hi, welcome to Midwest Magic Cleaning. My name is that face that John Mayer makes when he plays a guitar solo. And today we're going to be cleaning out the most hoarded bedroom I've ever seen. This one was so bad that you literally couldn't enter the room. You could only step into the doorway. And so starting in this room wasn't much of a choice. You just had to pick a pile toward the door and start getting things out of the way. So with this one, there was a kind of a tub full of clothes that were kind of folded and kind of not. Like the top part of the pile was not folded and the clothes underneath it were. So I folded those to get them out of the way. And then once I got down to the actual folded clothes, I could just pick up the whole tub and move it. Now there's a lot to get to in this video. So much that I didn't even know where to start narrating. First, it's of note that part of this floor is caved in just from the sheer weight of the things that have been sitting on it. So the room is actually dangerous. It's a fire hazard. It's a tripping hazard. Again, you couldn't enter it until I cleared off the first two feet of floor. There's very little actual garbage in this room, which is to say spent packages and things like that. Most of this stuff was actual items, like most of it was clothing. She hoards picture frames and shelving. And there's a prepper aspect to this house, which you can see if you follow not only this room, but this will be in a playlist called the Dr. Pepper House. And I also cleaned the kitchen and the living room. And I found like 70 pounds of sugar plus more sugar that was stored in two liter bottles. In the back right hand part of this scene, you can see a bunch more two liter bottles. That's all salt that they've stored. They stored water, massive amounts of medication. And I've been asked before what I mean when I say a prepper aspect to hoarding. There's two kinds of prepping. There are people who say grow their own food and can their own food and prepare for things like a natural disaster or a major storm or if somehow the electricity went out for a week, they'd be able to survive without having to run back and forth to the store. There's also a type of prepper that is preparing for the apocalypse and they believe that within their lifetime, the world is going to end and they're going to need to survive amongst hordes of almost video game style apocalypse scenarios. The latter typically hoards massive amounts of food and preservatives and like to the point to where it affects their actual present lives. And that's kind of what we see here. This is not severe prepper hoarding, but there is a prepper aspect to it. I've been in houses where they've hoarded so much water that they've completely filled their basement with nothing but water. Anyway, that's a totally different video and a different subject. It's kind of fascinating to read about. But back to this room, this had some really, really nice furniture in it. And this bed was kind of a shame because it, it looks to me like an antique bed and it's very expensive looking, but it had so much stuff on it that the bed kind of collapsed on the framework and I'm hoping it can be fixed, but it looks like the bottom part of the frame is snapped off, like where the footboard is. All of the dressers and armoires are completely stuffed with clothing and pillows and blankets, you, like you can't put any more in there. So space becomes an issue. And because of that, at the very end of this video, I want to show you what it looks like without the tubs that I'm filling. And then I'm going to show you what it looks like after I had to put everything back because there was nowhere to put these tubs of stuff. So they all had to go right back on the bed again. There was not even room to put them on the floor. We'll go over all that here in just a bit, but I'll also show you the closet because there were, I wasn't able to get to the closet. And the reason was because I ended up throwing my shoulder out right in the middle of cleaning this room. What happened was I filled a tub with a bunch of picture frames and really heavy items, which made it about 100 pounds. I then stacked that tub on top of another tub, which was about 100 pounds. And me being me and knowing how I extraordinarily strong I am. Strong enough to where I have to watch myself whenever I pick up a tub because I could do it too fast and just disintegrate the tub. That's just how I roll. But I picked that up. It was about 200 pounds and I was fine carrying it until I had to lift it up over another pile of hoard. And once I got that to eye level, a tendon in my left shoulder popped. It didn't like tear or anything. It just snapped back like a rubber band and it injured my shoulder pretty badly. I was able to carry on clean until I made the bed later on in the video and then I popped it again 
And at that point, I had to find a stopping point because it hurt so bad I could basically not use my left arm. Now, in the last video, I mentioned that this lady lives alone. I actually found out during this visit that she doesn't. And that was actually some assumptions on my part. Here's what I found out during this part of the cleanup. And this is something that I sadly find out a lot. I come into a house and I get the story of, you know, the person who lives there is a hoarder. And I get the background of the PTSD they've gone through and the trauma. And I often hear from people about how they've helped for years and years, and then they just hit a breaking point, which is really, really common. Because I hear a lot, where where were the kids during all this? Well, in almost every case, the kids were there their entire lives. And they constantly clean up, and then it goes back to this condition. Then they clean up, and then it goes back over and over and over. And eventually, people are human. They hit their breaking point and say, I cannot do this anymore. However, in almost every case, one person takes the blame for for all of the hoarding. And it turns out that in most cases, they are responsible for most of the hoarding, but not all of it. So you get people who live with them, and then those people either add to the hoard because that's what they're used to, or they've given up, or they've just learned to live that way because the primary hoarder has lived that way their whole lives. But it's almost never a case of one person being 100% responsible for the entire mess. Judging from the things that I picked up in this room, this was not just one person causing the whole house to be this way. And now understand, this is not a blame situation. I'm not looking to say, oh, oh, this is your fault too. I never point fingers with this. This is a mental illness. I'm not going to be blaming somebody for being depressed. I'm not going to be assigning shame to somebody who is only living their life. And as a consequence of that mental illness, their life turns into what you're seeing here. It's a common mental illness. I think they, the number was like one in 19 Americans have some level of hoarding disorder. And she is going through therapy and her daughter is going through therapy. So that's a good thing. That's a step in the right direction. So there are steps being made to correct the issue. But anyway, I, I just find it interesting that you often find people who are so embarrassed about the condition of their house and the level of the mental illness that they want to find one dumping ground to point the source of the mess toward. Now you'll notice that I'm folding all these clothes and putting them into tubs. Nothing that I found in here was dirty. There was one clothes basket that had dirty clothes in it. The rest of this was all just clean clothes that were thrown on the floor. Now that's not to say that all these clothes were clean and ready to wear. I would still wash all of these because they were on the floor. But I didn't find rodent droppings in here, no mice or anything. I didn't find bugs, no bed bugs, no roaches. Those were all confined to the kitchen and the living room, mainly the kitchen, but this room was strangely devoid of all of that. Normally, whenever you have this much stuff piled up, you'll find tons and tons of mouse droppings because the mice make homes underneath the piles because it's a really good, safe home for a mouse. And then in really, really hoarded rooms, you'll find moose, the full-blown moose underneath all the piles because it's, it's safe. It just lays underneath there all day going, moose, moose, or however moose say they're moose called. I'm not an expert on moose. Now, because of the injury, I could not do everything I needed to do in this room. I got all the clutter picked up except for the far side of the bed that would be on the right side of your screen over by those dressers. There's not a lot to pick up over there. It's just like some toilet paper and paper towels and there's like a respirator machine. I think the person who was on the respirator no longer lives in this house. He lives on his own now and gets uh, care. But there was the most important things I wanted to take care of was I wanted to take all the stuff off the top of the dressers and armoires and all that stuff and clean all the furniture and get it liquid golded and get all the knickknacks cleaned up and put back in a nice, pretty, organized and decorative manner. 
But after the shoulder went, there was no way I could even keep reaching up there. I was I was actually in fairly severe pain. I'm still in pain, and it's been a couple days since I've done this. I also wanted to clean out the closet, but then I found out that that's actually impossible. And you'll see a clothes rack in the back. I wanted to take all the stuff off of that and get it organized because just getting that part organized would make the whole room look way cleaner. We'll see all that here in just a bit. So while I'm folding clothes, let me tell you a little bit about the closet. I'm going to show you pictures of that at the end of this video. It was stuffed so full. And keep in mind, this is a walk-in closet, a fairly big walk-in closet. It was so full of stuff that when you opened the door, the things inside were compressed against the door and they kept their shape like a cartoon. I opened the door and the stuff inside was still like in block formation where the door had compressed it all together. I say it's impossible to clean, but only in my current situation. In order to actually clean this house, and specifically this room. She's going to have to hit a point in therapy where she's willing to get a dumpster. And we're talking like a 20-yard dumpster, a big dumpster. And she's going to have to be willing to get rid of at least 75% of everything she owns. She has way too much clothing. That is her biggest hoard outside of food. And in fact, I would say actually clothing is her biggest hoard. Food is her second biggest hoard. Then behind that would be medication and craft supplies. But it would take more than just me to clean this up. I would have to have at least one, if not two people with me so I didn't injure myself again because I'm so strong and so masculine that I could just pick up a cup off the floor. But I do it with such fervor and intensity that I can just destroy my own body by accident. They call me Johnny destroying his own body back in Austin. Yo, man, is that Johnny destroying his own body? I don't know. Let's put a cup on the floor and see what happens. I bet he destroys it. Now, I also did not clean under the bed and that was mainly because she had stuff stored already. There were already things in tubs and already stored. Pulling those out would have meant I pulled out things from underneath the bed looked at it, and then shoved it right back underneath the bed again. There's literally nowhere to store this stuff. As far as the tubs, I put all the pants in one tub, or actually two tubs, all the shirts in another two tubs, uh, socks and underwear went in a mini tub, and then all the miscellaneous things that I found, everything from picture frames to old pieces of electronics. I found a whole laptop, an, an old school Toshiba laptop. All the extra stuff went into their own tubs, and I marked every one of those. Now, now let me explain this a little bit better so you can understand the position I'm in. She only just started therapy. She is not at the point in her therapy where she is able to just get rid of a bunch of stuff without encountering even more trauma, like getting rid of stuff would trigger that trauma. That in turn can actually intensify the hoarding and make it way, way worse. So at this point in her therapy, we need to keep everything that's not literal garbage. Because of that, after I was done cleaning this room, it is still not usable. It's still not what I'd consider safe. It's still not what I would consider clean because remember, we didn't wipe down anything. All we did was pack her stuff away and get it at least somewhat organized so that when she does hit that point in her life and in her therapy where she's able to get rid of things, at least she can look down and say, okay, this tub is filled with nothing but picture frames. I already have 250 picture frames. Let's just get rid of this whole tub. Or this is all nothing but old obsolete technology. Let's get rid of this. And that, that makes it easier and at least more organized than what it is right now. But this room is in no way ready to use. This is only step one in a multi-step process to get this house back into livable condition. And because therapy takes so long in a case that's this severe, this may be a year or two before she's ready to get this back into order. But at least what we're doing now gets the things off the floor and gets them in some sort of category and moved together to a point to where it's at least not piled up past the bed. If she needed to come into this room to grab something, at least there's walking room by the time I'm done with this.
Now, while I was packing all this stuff up, the only thing that I could do um, is create a staging ground in the living room, which I'd already cleaned for all the tubs and all the things that I was moving out of this room temporarily because there was so little room to walk that I couldn't just move things out of the way like I would say in the kitchen video. It had to come completely out of the room. So as I was cleaning all this up, I would walk into the living room and it would instantly overwhelm me because the living room was entirely filled with tubs to the point where I made the living room in its staging ground another horde where I only I could only walk between the tubs if I turned myself sideways. And those were stacked two and three high. I bought 14 tubs total on this room and another 12 or 14 for the living room. So in this free cleanup, I have so far spent about, I would say around $600 just to buy all the storage stuff, all the chemicals that I use to clean it up. In total, I drove 120 miles back and forth to get to the place on two different days. And I, I haven't even gotten to the bathroom yet. The bathroom I really, really wanted to do for this video. But after my shoulder popped, there was no way that I could scrub down a tub. I did go ahead and clean the toilet off camera just because everybody deserves a clean toilet. Apologies for backtracking, but I need to backtrack just a little bit, so I guess I'm not sorry. I take that apology back. You apologize to me. Anyway, I get questions all the time that I wish I would address when I'm doing a kitchen video. But in the last video, and pretty much every kitchen video, <laughs> I, I get asked if I ever pull out the stove and the refrigerator to clean behind and underneath them and on the sides. The short answer is no, but there are several reasons why I don't do that. The first First is I never pull out a gas stove ever because I've been around enough houses to know that sometimes when they put in those gas stoves, they do it in such a way that you basically can't pull them out without risking snapping a gas line. I've just been around a lot of houses that were shoddily built or the person who put in the stove didn't know what they were doing and it becomes an issue. And so I'm not going to risk busting a gas line. The second is I've got a bad back on top of bad shoulders and bad legs and just a bad existence, pretty much a bad soul <laughs> to my to my very core. Uh, they call me Bad Soul Johnny. They don't call me that. Then nobody calls me Bad Soul Johnny. Anyway, pulling out the refrigerator in a house like this that is hoarded with food, the refrigerator and freezer are so packed that it makes the whole thing upwards of like 800 pounds, like so much that it bows the floor. And so I would have to have like four dudes helping me move that out, then cleaning under it, then pushing it back. And it's just a liability. So what I try to do is clean under it as much as possible without moving it. So what I try to do is I get like the green side of a Liebman broom is put together at a steeper angle than the other side. So you push down on the floor and those bristles go under the stove or the refrigerator. Or in the case of this kitchen, I cleaned it by hand. So I just got my fingers underneath there as best I could. And it's the same thing with mopping. I just try to get under them as best I can. Now, if it's an electric stove, I don't mind trying to pull that out. But again, if I don't have help pulling it out, I'm not going to risk that on my own. 
I'm doing these houses for free and I'm already putting in a massive amount of time and money and effort into the houses. So I usually tell the owners that, hey, if you have kids that can help, I've done all this stuff. You guys at some point are going to need to pull out the stove and just do that small area. Or the next time you clean out your refrigerator, like that has to be a personal project for you to completely clean out the fridge whenever you're restarting your life. When you do that, when the fridge is empty, pull all that out and clean behind it. It can be your personal project, but it needs to be done at some point. The other question that I get all the time is, are you a wizard? And that's none of your business. But yes, yes, I am. Specifically, I'm a wizard of spin kicks. I can summon a spin kick whenever, wherever, with little to no effort. That's the main reason they call me spin kick wizard Johnny guy back in Charlotte. It's also the reason I'm no longer allowed in Charlotte. But I can tell you about that on another video, if I'm legally allowed. Uh, by the way, my shoulder has already been injured at this point, but I refuse to give up. <laughs> so as I'm putting on this sheet, I one, I messed it up and put it on the wrong way. So I had to take it all off again. And two, as I reach over the bed to get this corner put on, I've re-injured the already injured shoulder. And that's where I was like, okay, you've got to find a, a way to grit your teeth and get through this, eat the pain, and then you can go home and ice this thing down and take some anti-inflammatories and see if you can heal this up. But all that stuff in the background is driving me nuts because I want to do something with it. And no, I'm not doing hospital corners. If any bed has a bedspread that can go beyond the sheet to where it hides it, I'm not going to go through and tuck everything in and make the sheet completely hospital cornered up. I'm just not doing it. You ever see me getting some extra energy and I want to go crazy with a the bed, then fine, I'll do it. But to me, that sheet is hidden.
I did find matching pillowcases that were not just in the brand new sheet set, but were bought separately. So I took six of her pillows, and I think she had about 15 or 20. I took six of the best ones and put those on the bed, and the rest of them got crammed into a closet and into sort of an armoire deal that was already filled with bedspread stuff. But yeah, I could have actually covered this entire bed with pillows, which would have been kind of funny. If you didn't know, we sell merchandise, t-shirts, coffee mugs, stickers, all the stuff you'd expect from a cheesy YouTube merchandise shop. But it's got a lot of our running jokes and some stuff that's not running jokes but are just dumb and funny. I'll put a link to that in the description. I'll also put a link to our members only section. It's $4.99 a month and you get an extra video every Wednesday, but please don't do that unless you can truly afford it. It's just a way for people to help financially support the channel because I don't do Patreon or anything like that. That's just me and the, the gang just kind of being goofy every Wednesday. I'll do informative videos on there too from time to time. Like sometimes I'll do a, a cleaning and sometimes I'll do just an informative video on how the business is running. Run. Sometimes it's just me and Jason shopping for supplies, but those are all just, you know, straight up fun videos. And if you haven't subscribed yet, we're actually on the race to 1 million subscribers. We're almost to a quarter of a million now. We're edging up on that, which is crazy because we've only been a channel for just a little bit over a year. And we got our first YouTube plaque, which was the silver one in just a few months. And now I want to get the gold one so I can rub it in my kids' faces and show them how much better I am than them because, I mean, Come on, I'm all this, and they're not, baby. Uh. And if you can't rub a YouTube plaque in your kids' faces and make them feel bad about themselves, I mean, what's, what's even the point? Now, I don't know when I'm going to be able to come back to this house. This house cannot be fully cleaned until she gets rid of stuff, and I have no idea when she's going to be able to get to that point. Once she is to that point, I will pay for her dumpster, which is a lot. The, the dumpsters can be on the cheap end around $400, but if they are hard to get a hold of, sometimes those can go upwards of 12 1200 bucks, depending on how in demand they are versus how many are available. Typically, they run between four and eight hundred dollars. But anyway, that all aside, I will get her a dumpster and we will start getting rid of things and turning this house back into a livable home again.
So I shot an extra video that people have been asking me for for a while, which is what is in my kit and how do you start doing this? Like, what do you need to start doing things like this? I'd keep your eyes open for that on Tuesday because I'm trying to get to the point where I can do two videos per week. One big, big, big cleanup and then one video that's more like informative. Anyway, here's what it looks like without the stuff piled all back up. And here's what it looks like with it piled up again because there was just no place to store all those tubs. And then that closet is absolutely insane. Anyway, thanks for watching. Members, I will see you on Wednesday. Everybody else, I'll see you next weekend. Later.